because we're going to add two numbers together, and we'll call them A and B. Now, A and B are real numbers, so they could be positive, negative, or zero. So what we're going to do is construct a little table here. We'll have the number A that we're going to add to the number B, and we have a couple of different cases we need to consider. What if A is positive uh, and B is negative, for instance? What if A is positive and B is positive? What's going to happen? So let's figure out what happens to the result of A plus B, because that's what we're trying to do is learn how to add these numbers together. So we're going to construct this little table, and then we will uh, figure out how to, how to use it to solve problems. All right, so we're going to take the easiest case first. What is going to happen if A is positive and B is positive? Well, these are just, this is the problem, these are the problems that you've been working all of your life. You know, 3 plus 7, 7 plus 9, things like that. Well, these are things you already know. What you do is basically add, I'm going to write it as absolute value of A, and you add to it the absolute value of B, which basically means, since they're both positive, you're just going to add A plus B. And the sign uh, of the result what, what is it going to be? It's always going to be positive. Because if you add 3 plus 4, um, then you're always going to get positive 7, for instance. So if you add positive to positive, uh, you're always going to just add them together, and you're going to get a positive answer. So just to absolutely beat it, home, beat it uh, to death, if you had 3 plus 8, for instance, you're always going to get positive 11. You just add them, and the result is positive. All right, so let's uh, fill out and continue going along in this table. All right, what is going to happen if you add together a negative number plus another negative number? For instance, negative 3 plus negative 4, or negative 10 plus negative 20, or negative 5 plus negative 1, something like that, where you're adding both numbers together that are negative. Well, I gave you some examples in the previous uh, lesson of that when we use the number line. The bottom line is when you start with a negative number and you add more negative to it, you're, you start owing somebody money and then you borrow more money, then you're going to get more and more negative. So the way you handle it mathematically is you add A, the absolute value of A, plus the absolute value of B, okay? So you, you add them together, forgetting about the signs, um, to get the result, but then the sign of the result is always going to be negative. Because if you start out owing somebody money, which is what this number means, and you add to it more owing, or you owe somebody even more money, you're always going to get a negative answer. And so that's always going to happen. So an example of that would be, for instance, negative 3 plus negative 2. And we've used this kind of thing in the number line before. What you're going to always get is negative 5 for the answer. In this case, I start out with owing $3. I have negative bank account balance, and I borrow two more dollars. Well, I'm going to owe the bank $5 at the end. So what this means here is you ignore the signs. When you're adding two negative numbers, you ignore the signs. You add these numbers together, you get 5. And the sign of the result is always going to be negative because when they're both negative here, you always get negative. All right, let's continue on and write the next guy here. What is going to happen when you have uh, a positive number added to a negative number or a negative number added to a positive number. And this is what I was trying to explain in the last section. It's a little bit hard to do without tons of examples, but the bottom line is what you need to do is you need to subtract the absolute values uh, subtract the absolute values of the numbers. No matter if it's no matter if you're doing uh, a positive number uh, plus a negative number or a negative number plus a positive number, when you have mixed signs like this and you're adding them, you always just subtract the absolute values. And then you just have to decide on the sign. The sign could be positive or negative. And so what you write is the sign of a result um, is the same as the larger of absolute value of A or uh, absolute value of B. All right, it's just easier to talk about this in terms of examples because we've it's much easier when you're using actual numbers. So if you have 7 plus negative 2, how do you handle that? So we're adding a positive and a negative number. I'm telling you, anytime you add positive with negative, you just subtract these numbers. You forget about the sign, you take 7 minus 2, and you get 5. And now you have to decide, is it going to be positive or negative? Because it could be either in this case when you're mixing signs like this. The answer could be positive or negative. You look and you find out which number is bigger. And when I say bigger, I'm talking about the absolute value. The absolute value of this is 7. absolute value of this is 2. So this is the larger number, so the answer is positive. So this answer is positive 5. All right. 
quick examples. What if you have 7 plus negative 9? These are mixed here, so you just subtract them. 9, you take the bigger number, 9 minus 7, you get 2. That's the number. Now you have to decide on the sign. So you look at these guys here. Which one's bigger, this one or this one? Well, this one has the larger absolute value because that absolute value is 9, so the, it takes the sign of the larger absolute value, uh, which in this case is negative. Okay, what if we have... Uh, negative 9 plus 7. So here, this is the exact same problem. I just want to show you. This is negative uh, 7 plus negative 9. We just flip them around. This is negative 9 plus 7. I'm just showing you you're doing exactly the same thing. When you add these guys and they have different signs, you just subtract them. 9 minus 7 is 2, and you have to decide what sign should it be, positive or negative. This has the larger absolute value, so the sign of the answer is, is matching that. It's negative. And then the, the last one we'll do is negative 2 plus 1. Uh, really quickly here. You're mixing signs here when you're adding them, so you just subtract. 2 minus 1 is 1, and the sign of the answer could be positive or negative. It's going to match this sign because it's the larger absolute value. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2, which is bigger than 1, so the answer is negative 1. So that's the final answer. So these rules, really there's only three rules here, and I agree, you have to practice with them. We're going to get a lot of practice, but basically these will let you add any two um, real numbers together, positive or negative. And so it it's, seems like it's a lot, but we're going to solve a lot of problems here in the next few sections to give you a lot of practice with it. The bottom line is as follows, to summarize. If you add two positive numbers together, all you do is you add them and the answer will always be positive. If you're adding two negative numbers together, all you do is you add them, and when I say you add them, you add the numbers, forget about the signs. That'll give you the number. And the sign of the answer will always be negative. So here you add two positives, you get a positive. Add two negatives, you get a negative. The only thing you really have to think about is if you're adding mixed signs, positive to negative or negative to positive, but you do the same thing in both cases. All you do is you subtract the numbers, okay, and then you have to decide on the sign. And the sign is always going to match the absolute value, the, the larger of the numbers absolute value. So you have to think a little bit about what's going on here. Um, and so what we're going to do here is stop this lesson here, and we'll go on to the next lesson. We'll work probably a couple dozen problems to give you really good understanding of how to handle this. Eventually, it'll just be really, really second nature to you because we'll do so many problems. So I'll reinforce these rules along the way. For now, just try to study them and understand them, and follow me on to the next lesson. We'll get lots and lots of practice. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.